In this video, I'm going to be walking through how you can set up Lead Potato from Libre Computers. And this is a pretty cool competitor for the Raspberry Pi 3 because as of right now during this chip shortage, people on eBay are charging pretty exorbitant amounts for Raspberry Pi 3s that are honestly using some pretty dated things like these are from 2015, you're spending good money on stuff. And on Amazon right now, you can actually buy this thing, which is essentially a copy of the Raspberry Pi 3 for much cheaper. And the manufacturing dates on this thing are actually from July of 2022 for me on of this year. So much more modern, much more recently created stuff that, you know, if you're looking to get into microcomputers, I think this is a better way to start than by going with the rest of the sheep herd into Raspberry Pis. So uh, that's what we're doing. Also, these things have more RAM than the Raspberry Pi threes do. Um, this has this specific one has two gigs and a little bit faster processor as well. So a lot better deal all around if you're looking to kind of immerse yourself in this little micro PC uh, segment. So um, I've gone to the Lead Potato website. I'm sorry, the Armbian website. They've got a page dedicated to Lead Potato. And um, I've downloaded this image right here as of today. And I'm going to first work on creating a little micro SD card to have the image for this thing to run. So um, I've already plugged in my micro SD card to the computer and I'm going to open up uh, my downloads folder and I've already extracted the XZ file using 7-zip into the .img file. And then I also have this Win32 disk imager utility that I'll be using to actually move that image onto a onto the micro SD card for this thing to run successfully. So I'm going to uh, click the start menu, type in 132 disk imager, hit yes, and it's going to pull this thing up. I'm going to now find that image file and we're going to select this guy and we're going to uh, see that our target disk of E, which is that 32 gig drive uh, micro SD card is selected, which is great. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, click on write in order to start sending this data to uh, the E drive. So we will give this thing a moment and it's 1.8 gigs. So this can take a few minutes, but we'll let it run. Cool. So we've just finished writing. So I'm going to click OK. And I'm now going to right click the E drive in Windows and I'm going to eject this thing so that we can now get our micro SD card. Alrighty, so here we go. So now I'm going to plug this guy into the board, just like that. So now we've got an operating system or image created for this guy. I'm now going to take a micro USB cable and plug it into this guy. And when I do, you will see it light up. So plugging that guy in. There we go. We've got a nice light. And I am also going to now take an Ethernet cable and plug this guy right into there. So we've got an Ethernet cable, our power cable, and the micro SD card inserted into our little lipid data. And now I'm going to uh, give this thing some time to do its first time boot up. But while that's going, um, I've already signed into my TP-Link. Uh, I'm using a TP-Link router on my home network. And right now, this thing should be acquiring an IP address from the router. And when it does, we'll be able to SSH to it using PuTTY. So uh, I'm going to refresh this page. I'm going to log in. Cool. So there we go. So we now have our Le Potato showing up on our home network. And I'm going to copy its IPv4 address, its internal IPv4 address. And I'm going to open up PuTTY on Windows. And I'm going to paste in this IP address. And we're going to be connecting to port 22, which is the SSH port. And click on Open. It's going to tell us that this is dangerous because there can be a man in the middle attack. I'm going to say it's OK. So we're just going to accept the risk and now it's asking us how would we want to log in. Let me very quickly just make the text bigger so that I can see. Change the size of this stuff. Cool. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to log in as the root user and the password by default from Armbian is 1234. Hit enter 
and it's going to ask us to create a new root password. So I'm going to type in my root password and I messed up so and we're also going to tell it that we were going to be using bash and we're going to give it a username I'll give it my name and uh, I will plug in a password Excellent, and um, we're going to say yes, set this up with our language uh, from our location, and um, we're just gonna be going with the defaults. Awesome, so we are now signed in as the root user on our Lepetero board, which I think is really, really cool. And uh, so now what we can do is, you know, we can ping google.com or something and just show that we've got a nice working internet connection. Um, we can also do stuff now like download Docker, uh, which is something that I think would be uh, really cool too. But for the sake of just getting started, I'm going to control C this. Um, I'm going to run apt get update just so that we can make sure we're using the latest uh, packages. So this can take some time depending on your internet connections. But um, as you can see, we now have uh, a working Ubuntu image on our uh, Lepetero, which is awesome. And I'm also going to run apt get upgrade. And this is a lot faster than the little <laughs> orange pi zero that we had. So um, I'm just pretty impressed by the speed so far. Um, but yeah, so far so good. The little microcomputer PC is getting its first operating system installed on it. You can also install one that has like a graphical interface um, if you decided to on the website here uh, get something from uh, this guy. So Armbian. Um, yeah, so, but the image is gonna be quite a bit, quite a lot larger, um, but this guy gives you a nice little interface for it if you don't wanna be using the uh, the command line. But, you know, here you go, you're started, and now we can do some other cool things with this, like start installing MotionEye. So um, stay tuned for those videos, and thank you again for watching. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll talk to you guys next time.